are trying to figure this egg out, aren't you? What's that supposed to mean? Just means these tasks are designed to test you. In the most brutal way, they're almost cruel. Welcome to the second task. I'd say the biggest challenge in terms of filmmaking was the underwater task. We had to somehow create the illusion that this was real. Harry Potter worlds always have full CG environments, but this one is just extensive because the underwater's new, you've never seen it before. And it's not a natural environment that we're creating. It's obviously, it's, a, it's our own version of what one would expect to find at the bottom of a Scottish lock. It was felt that the look of somebody underwater in the close-ups couldn't really be recreated uh, as, as well as, as it looks uh, if you do it for real. So it then became clear to us that we were going to have to shoot this underwater in some form or other. So Dan had to learn how to dive. And we had to build a tank. And uh, that, of course, you know, was hugely challenging. When you leave pool, swim, do a back somersault, and then back to your kit, yeah? OK. Dan rose to the challenge and undertook something that I think you know, many adults would have been fearful of. He was brilliant. We obviously wanted to get as much practice in as possible for the underwater stuff, so we trained for about six months before. We started off not very deep at all, just in a normal, quite shallow swimming pool. It was great because I just could go down there and be confident. We all wanted it to look as natural as possible, and so that's why we trained for so long. And then I was ready for the 20-foot tank. How's that, Dan? Yes, yeah, great. Good, very good. Fantastic. Yeah. Being youngsters, we needed to be able to create the under, underwater environment, so we designed and built this tank. It's a very complex piece of equipment. The tank itself holds about half a million gallons of water, which is two and a half million litres. It's probably the best tank in the world for filming. Dan's in, going straight over to the rock with Dan. That's Dan descending downstairs here. When I actually went in, it was so vast, so much more so than I had actually imagined. Dan, so nice and slow on the way in. Dan also has to worry about one other thing, which is performance. You know, it's all right swimming around like a fish, but Dan eventually has to give you the, the Harry Potter performance. Stand by. Three, two. One, breather out. Action swimming. Probably the most difficult sequence will be when Dan has to rescue the two characters and to swim with them to the surface. Grab, throw your head back when you grab. Lovely. Perfect, Dan. Really nice. The second unit people planned so that no shot would last longer than between nine and 11 seconds because that's as long as you can do without air and keeping your eyes open. Dan, split your look between the green light and the knot. Yeah. The main thing that really sort of was a bit frustrating was the fact that communication is obviously quite difficult. Then, on action, you turn to camera, quizzical look, and go. There are certain signals like this. This confused me, because this means, quick, I'm drowning, get me up to the surface. Whereas to me, that means, hey, I'm fine. Dan, that was really good. Do exactly the same as that last one. Thank you. I just have my AD's voice. I tell him, he tells him, so they hear one voice. Look to his right. Look to your right again. Okay. And go for it. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. On dry land, you're, here's your mark, here's your mark. And underwater, it's, it's not as easy as that, you know? So you add all that into the mix, and it's, it, you realize what an effort it was for him to do that. Hit! Look it up. Close to the camera. Close to the camera, Aaron. Very nice. Do you want to go to the habitat for a minute? This shoot is quite unusual because of the duration whilst we're in the water. So we've designed uh, an underwater habitat and the artists can go inside. They have communications to us. They have a, a playback monitor so that they're, they're uh, completely up to speed on what the director or the first assistant would like them to do for the next shot. Uh, yeah. 
each shot was sort of quite seriously structured in terms of pre-visualization and storyboards. So we had a sense of what we needed, and gradually we pieced the whole together in a sequence that was essentially Dan against a blue screen. We wanted this lake to be miles long like they are up in Scotland, and that was all going to be done in the computer, so we had to figure out how to do blue screen underwater. Shot there. Very nice, Dan. That was very, very groundbreaking, shooting plates uh, against an underwater blue screen. A lot of research went into that, and they finally came up with an underwater blue screen lit from behind. The blue screen setup for, for shooting was um, quite an enormous challenge for, for the electrical guys. There's a tremendous amount of cable, there's a tremendous number of fluorescent tubes. It achieved another goal as we move forward. Swim higher, Robert, swim up to Bruce. You have no idea what the scene is going to look like. There was nothing in the water at all. There's just sort of just massive amounts of blue screen. I really enjoyed the diving and it was hard work and it was very physical, but it was really rewarding. I got given by the stunt department, this was my Christmas present for them, which was the Professional Divers Daily Record. And it has in it you know, every dive that I ever did while filming. And in the total time that I spent underwater was 41 hours and 38 minutes over about three weeks, which I was, which again, I'm very proud of. And then, uh, with the aid of digital effects, we had to create the environment and create the characters that inhabit that world. There was a lot of discussion about the look of, of the environment to begin with. Um, everyone wanted to go for a, a sort of a green underwater look rather than the more tropical blue because it's supposed to be a deep, dark, dank lake. We ended up creating countless different varieties of plants so that there was always movement. The most important thing for the challenges was to get across to the audience that Harry was in danger. Each creature is designed because virtually nothing is from the real world. We don't want to compromise, you know, we want them to feel real and unique and authentic. That's what we've been aiming to, you know, to achieve. Our mermaid is very much a creature of the deep. We uh, did have discussions about the mermaid designs. When the audience sees it, it has to feel and seem 100% real. It's great that the mermaid's faces are like a fish. You, you know that it's a female creature, but it doesn't have very female features. It has a fish face. They were quite hard to get this balance between gracefulness and elegance and beauty, and at the same time, still be scary. <laughs> One of the things we all felt was key was to make them not look as though they could possibly be a person in a mermaid suit. We went to the route of the tails moving like this, which was just an, an impossibility for a human to sort of even mimic. Stuart Craig in the production design department designed Crumb. It's quite a bizarre concept, having half human, half shark. It's great in the sequence, he starts off coming towards you and all you see is the shark's teeth and it's quite scary. And then as he comes past, you see these little human legs kicking him along behind wearing swimming trunks, which uh, it was quite entertaining and quite fun trying to, trying to make that. <laughs> Quindlows are something out of the imagination of, of everyone involved in creating them, I suppose. It's always challenging to come up with fancy creatures like this that have nothing that you can look at and compare to and say, yes, we've matched that right. What One of the things we always have to do is try and find as creatures that are as similar as possible, or at least different aspects of them are similar. Like we looked at squid and octopus to try to get some of the, the skin texture from them. And it's a, a process of iterations of creating something and discussing it and changing it and, until you eventually come up with a creature that, that everyone's happy with. There was a lot of fabrication, a lot of imagination while shooting it, and uh, a real challenge, but an awful lot of fun. Very good, Dan. 